simple and, and short. I'm working on a tubing model and a transfer formation. And I have an approach, we have really fantastic talks about dynamical systems. So I also have a uh, perspective of dynamical systems to reaction diffusion systems that model Turing patterns. And uh, in particular, I, I look at the uh, uh, influence of ge geometry and size of the domain in which the pattern evolves, uh, as to see uh, if we choose different sizes of the domain with respect to some parameters within the model, what happens to the dynamical properties uh, of the system. So this is the layout, and I'll skip some of the information. So it's, it's, originally it's Alan Turing who came up with the idea that reaction diffusion systems could be possible for the emergence of spatial pattern in nature. Uh, that has many examples. So for example, some chemical species uh, uh, you can put together to react and diffuse simultaneously, and they just self-organize into special pattern. And a similar process is uh, speculated to be happening for the spots of a cheetah or uh, stripes of zebra and things like that. So, so the motivation for my study is basically, uh, we, we already know that as domain grows, we have uh, this uh, behavior of uh, period doubling in the dynamics. So for example, uh, a larger domain will have three stripes of the same size, but if it enlarges more, the stripes won't enlarge. Instead, the number of stripes would enlarge, which is quite intuitive in comparison to the spectrum of Laplace, that is a part of the reaction diffusion systems. So that is, of course, when the, uh, when the uh, reaction and diffusion happens uh, uh, under a Lagrangian setup. So material evolved within uh, a domain that is uniformly uh, uh, evolving with time. Uh, but I will be looking at uh, static because it is the idea of comparing domain size with reaction diffusion systems and the domain is static. So we, we, we do not have domain evolution. And if we choose the scale of uh, parameters for reaction speed and diffusion speed, what happens to the dynamics? So these are the three different types of geometries. All of them are 2D geometries that I've looked at. One is the standard compact rectangular geometry. The second one is a compact circular geometry, which is a disc-shaped domain. And the third one is an annular region, which is non-compact. And that has some consequences for the analytical der derivation of the spectrum, as well as the bifurcation results for the Turing uh, pattern. So this is the system uh, in general that I look at. We have two coupling uh, s uh, equations of reaction diffusion type with nonlinear reaction kinetics and with zero flux boundary conditions of Neumann type and some positive bounded, positive bounded continuous initial conditions, which are chosen to be small perturbations near the uniform steady state of the nonlinear reaction. And this parameter, sorry, which one is there? Is this? Oh, yeah. So this reaction, this, this D is a non-dimensional reaction diffusion ratio. That is the reaction of the activator uh, to the inhibitor. Uh, no, sorry. The reaction of the inhibitor to the activator, the ratio. That is D. And this gamma is the, the rea reaction scaling parameters. Did I say reaction? This is diffusion. Yeah. This is for the non-dimensional diffusion coefficient. This is the reaction scaling parameter. And, uh, uh, well, if we wish to obtain analytical results on the bifurcation properties of Turing models, one essential step that we usually come across is the solution for this eigenvalue problem uh, under the Neumann uh, boundary state condition settings. <laughs> which I have chosen to be zero flux for my case. And in the first geometry that is rectangular, it is uh, the standard non uh, Laplace, not Laplace, uh, standard um, yeah, uh, rectangular Laplace eigenvalue problem associated to that. So the spectrum of Laplace on rectangular geometry with non value conditions. 
For the uh, second and third geometry, it's the fuller Laplace that I uh, look at. And uh, uh, so the, this theorem basically contains the closed form solutions which uh, for the annular region and the... You know, we should note that the spectrum of Laplace is crucially dependent on the uh, boundary conditions and the geometrical properties of the domain in which we look at. So, if WR satisfies the, the, the uh, eigenvalue problem that I stated in the previous stage, then for these domains 1, 2, and 3, uh, with the homogeneous normal boundary conditions, W has this form. The first one is again the trivial solution of the, uh, of the eigenvalue problem on the, uh, which is discrete infinite uh, with a discrete set of infinitely many positive eigenvalues. This second one, so these are the eigenvalues, these are the eigenfunctions. For the disk shape domain, it has this form. These two are the Bessel series of the first kind. Uh, and if we look at the order of the associated Bessel's equations, that is n, we look, each r depends on n and j, then we choose it from this set. And there is a reason for this. That is, and, and of course, this n makes the spectrum of diffusion operator on a disk to be a semi-discrete uh, set of uh, eigenvalues. They are discrete with respect to these positive k's, but continuous with respect to n. So uh, if we choose, say we choose arbitrary n, we can choose uh, full integer, half integer, or any real value, then uh, we can still derive analytically the spectrum of the diffusion uh, 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 operator. But that will require to incorporate Bessel, fun Bessel functions of the second kind, because in that kind of setting, when every time n becomes uh, a full integer or half integer, the Bessel series of the first kind become linearly independent, become independent, linearly independent with each other, linearly dependent. So, in order, if we want it to be linearly independent, we need to incorporate this uh, second kind of Bessel series. And uh, this is important to note: the domain-dependent weighting on the eigenvalues. So 1 over rho squared, the rho is the radius of a disk-shaped domain. And it becomes very different when you look at the annular region. Uh, so, but, but it's worth remembering and comparing, because we will look at the limiting case for the annular region as A, the inner radius tends to 0, if it coincides with this, because this solution is uh, derived on the compact region. Then we are happy and okay. If not, then there must be some, something to correct. So this is, again, the general solution. The eigen spectrum for the annular region is exactly the same as, as that for the uh, compact disk shape domain. But this is how the eigenvalues correspond to this uh, spectrum. Uh, we see this A is the inner radius of an annular region. B is the outer radius. N is, again, the associated order of Bessel's equation, which for this case, again, we choose from this set. And uh, these R, R1 and R2 are given to be these Bessel series. You might be wondering why I have the summation of the K and I have J's appearing here rather than K's. This is basically when we go through an argument uh, called, it's an argument of real analysis, it's called the telescoping argument. We, uh, in, uh, the previous speaker also mentioned something. So uh, when we uh, impose the zero flex boundary conditions to the general solutions in this setup. Uh, we uh, differentiate the Bessel series, equated to zeros at two boundaries. Uh, then uh, we require it to basically be zero, right? So in that case, then we have to, uh, we cannot have, we cannot obtain an eigenfunction for the each discrete index of the Bessel series. This is because we have to have a pairwise cancellation in the Bessel series in order to obtain uh, an analytical eigenfunction. And uh, that happens every time 2j equals k. The pairwise terms in the Bessel series have to cancel 
Uh, therefore, the summation is over k, uh, and uh, for each uh, vessel series to be an, uh, an input of, of this whole uh, expression. And uh, theta part, that is the uh, angular part, that is of course explained uh, by, expressed by this uh, expression. So one remark is that if we look at this, oops, if we look at this this part, this part, just this part of this item value, and uh, we look at it and express that domain-dependent weighting in terms of the thickness of a ring, that would be B minus A, right? Then we will be left with the rho in the expression and the inner radius. So the outer radius is embedded somehow in the row. And the expression takes this form. This is just simple verification for, uh, for the correction of our results, or not correction, but our, whether our results are correct or not. Uh, and if you take limit as a tends to zero, we uh, get exactly the same weight, domain dependent weighting that we have for the disk shift domain, that is one over rho squared. Uh, pointed out previously. So uh, how to see, how to detect these? You see the first geometry had this trivial uh, two uh, functions of two variables x and y that was the normal solutions cosine and phi x divided by L times cosine and phi y divided by L. But for the second two we have a complex valued function that has a theta <coughs> i n uh, as a consequence of the separation of variable method. So how to detect these, we, we use a method that is uh, really well explained in, in a, a book uh, by uh, the name of uh, Spectral Methods in MATLAB, and, Matla, and it's uh, written by Mekri Patton from Oxford. Uh, he has combined uh, championship discretization for the radial variable and uh, Fourier periodic discretization for the angular variable. What Chebyshev discretization and the choice of the radial variable is not chosen from zero to R, which would be something that we uh, should do intuitively, but he chooses uh, uh, from minus R to R and then applies the Chebyshev discretization, Chebyshev grading. What that does is if we choose odd number of Chebyshev points, then you uh, preclude the trouble from the singularity at the origin because your Chebyshev grading would be set up in a way that as it reaches the singular point, r equals zero, it jumps off it. The next grid is after r equals zero. So you never land at r equals zero. And the Fourier, Fourier grading is uh, chosen by this. So uh, I show you some meshes. The standard rectangular region, it's just a standard meshing. This is, these are the refined ones on which the actual simulation happened for the eigenvalue problem. Uh, and these are the first ones are the coarse ones just to show you the geometry of the mesh. So these are spectral meshes. These are like R theta type meshes. Uh, and uh, there is another interesting interaction between uh, Chebyshev and Fourier grading. That is, uh, we we achieved Chebyshev grading. We have a rather refined refinement. Basically, goes to the boundaries, and as you get closer to the origin, it becomes coarser and coarser with respect to radial variable. But with respect to the Fourier grading, what happens is when we are very close, because you have the fixed number of grading, so closer to the origin, you will have very fine angular grading, but. Uh, further away from the origin near the boundaries, you will have much coarser uh, boundary grading. So the coarsening of one uh, compensates for the refinement of the other, and vice versa. So uh, it, uh, you note that these numbers are always chosen to be odd. 25, 95, 25, 95, that is because of the championship grading, and the other these uh, delta theta are the angular step size. These are the trivial detection of the uh, eigen spectrum on a few modes, wave numbers, on a rectangular geometry. 
and then we have it for the disk shape domain, and these are the corresponding eigenvalues for each one. And uh, we have chosen, so these, these nine correspond to each one figure, these are the nodal line de detections. Uh, this detection is not a trivial way of, of uh, plotting a function of two variable on a two-dimensional geometry because uh, this has, uh, uh, these are complex value functions, so the complex effect is uh, depicted by a technique that is explained in a book by um, Wigert Elias, it's called complex, uh, depicting complex beauties or something. And uh, so he basically uh, shows a method how to, how to visualize the complex effect of a complex value function on a, on a domain. Here you note that the radial part, which, has, which, which depends on the Bessel series, is purely re real. There is nothing complex about that. But the angular part, e to the i and theta part, has the complex effect. And this is for the annular region. Uh, for the annular region, we see that the eigenvalues are significantly bigger, and uh, I presume this is because of the extra dependence on the inner radius as well, and that contributes to the, to the magnitude of the eigenvalue itself. So when we obtain these uh, analytical results from the harmonic analysis on bounded domains with normal flux conditions, what do we do with that? We employ it into the ansatz for the full system of reaction diffusion uh, uh, dependent variables and then we obtain the stability matrix this is where the results go the eigenvalues eta in k squared and then we uh, express the two dimensional discrete eigenvalue problem algebraic discrete eigenvalue problem now we move off the eigenvalue problems associated to the diffusion operator and then we know that the characteristic polynomial is given by that in terms of trace and determinant of the stability matrix. And uh, we just look at the bifurcation property. So how, where, where is this idea coming from to relate the domain size to the bifurcation properties of, of, uh, of a reaction fusion? It is embedded in the fact that if we have a bounded domain, we obtain some results through harmonic analysis through the spectrum of, of Laplace operator. And we know that there will be always a domain dependent element in the, in the expression for the eigenvalues. So when that is incorporated for the, in, into the stability matrix, we take that domain dependent or domain controlling parameter, rho, or in the case of rectangle, we have L, the side length of a square. And uh, we analyze that and compare it through this characteristic polynomial, through the domain of this characteristic polynomial, uh, uh, which would be, of course, the, the bifurcation not parameter, rather bifurcation plane of alpha, beta, right? So that is alpha, beta, are the parameters of the model. In that, then we, we obtain results for the choice of rho with respect to the reaction diffusion parameters uh, to analyze regions of uh, purely spatial patterning that are static in time. So a pattern, a pattern sets off, and then it never changes. Spots remain spots. And uh, then temporal bifurcation of a spatial pattern, and other results. Or complete stability, where system doesn't emerge any spatial pattern. And uh, we find that uh, for hop or transcritical or limit cycle behavior types, so that means if we require a reaction diffusion system of Turing type, to exhibit temporal bifurcation of a spatial pattern, then for a rectangle, it has been shown that L, the side length, has to be chosen bigger, large enough, satisfying this inequality. And you note that it, it is kind of directly proportional to the square root of D and inversely proportional to the square root of gamma. And square root of gamma, we said it was the reaction scaling parameter, and D was the non-dimensional diffusion ratio. M and N are uh, positive integers. Uh, for the second uh, disk-shaped domain, uh, equivalent condition is this, that the radius of a disk has to be chosen sufficiently large, satisfying this, in order to admit temporal 
periodicity in pattern formation. Similarly, for the annular region, we have this expression. And you might be wondering, where did the square root disappear? Right? Uh, we don't end up having a square root for this. And, and I think, I speculate that the, re the square root part is somehow uh, mimicked by the existence of this extra term that is subtracted from this. And this contains the inner radius, A. So, this, so, so the first case was if we wish to uh, obtain temporal periodicity. Now, suppose we have a reaction diffusion system of activated repeated time, and now we want to forbid it from temporal verification completely. We want to exclude all the possibilities that can admit temporal verification. Uh, then, for the first two domains, we find that it is the direct flip of inequality for the choice of L and for the choice of radius of a disk shaped domain. But for the latter case, that is the annular region, um, we have that rho has to be, or the thickness, or the thickness of the ring has to be smaller uh, than this quantity. But uh, it is not direct flip of inequality because in the previous one we had an eight there. Now, what happens between four and eight is something to look at. Uh, there could be regions that allow both temporal bifurcation as well as Turing type behavior, uh, uh, which is again in, in, in um, uh, clash with the idea that for a two by two stability matrix, uh, we have two roots of the characteristic polynomial. Now, two roots, we know they can never be one complex root, one real root. They are either complex conjugate or they are both real. Now, this region was tested a little bit, like a trial and error, choosing parameters and then testing it. It did show some, uh, I mean, between four and eight. It did show some, uh, in some cases, they would end up with Turing, pure Turing type behavior, and then in other cases, they would like to get some spatial pattern in time. But I, I'll focus on the, on the results that were derived for the conditions that I stated, and for those, uh, I have simulated the system through finite element method uh, to obtain uh, the results. But before I go to the finite element simulations, I want to show you uh, the partitioning curves on the bifurcation parameters, how we uh, partition the space. I mean, this is not just a partition for seeing where the regions are. This takes it a little bit further in a sense that it completely classifies the whole parameter space. Uh, without any stochastic or noise, but just in the, in the deterministic case. So there are two partitioning curves. We all know for the two by two system, we have one case where all the roots are real or all the roots are um, complex. That partition is given by the discriminant P is zero in the characteristic polynomial that is T squared minus 4D. The other case is when t squared minus 4d is negative, and then we get the real part to be positive, or, or to be zero. So that gives you the limit cycle behavior. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so this uh, you don't want to see because it's just a page of symbols. So uh, these, are the, these are the four types of unstable spaces for the Turing. You know, in Turing system, we are not interested in stable regions because stable regions are boring. They don't give us pattern. We're interested in, in, uh, in unstable regions. So here we have two types of uh, Turing state, uh, uh, regions. And then this is the hot bifurcation region. And this, these curves are the transcritical bifurcation curves. Now, uh, bear in mind that the conditions first we derived, we said that we have, uh, if we choose our parameter, domain size parameters large enough, then it admits hop or transcritical bifurcation, but it doesn't mean that it forbids Turing type behavior. So the first case also admits Turing type behavior. That is showing, that is by this. These, these are the Turing spaces, these are the hop bifurcation. And this is for the case where only Turing type behavior is admittable and no temporal verification. So well, this is why we have two types of Turing space, spaces under both conditions. 
these are stable, not impressive, these are the results. So, so here, if you choose the parameters in completely stable regions, this is what happens. You give it some perturbation uh, to the system from the uh, uniform initially, uh, uh, uniform steady state, then you run it, it will converge back to a constant steady state. You see, not much, much is happening, patternless. And then we have this uh, uh, uniform convergence in the discrete time derivative of the uh, numerical solution. But if you choose it from the Turing type region, you get nice spots. Uh, that, again, tells you a little bit about the topology of the spectrum of the diffusion operator on that region, right? Because we, we saw it uh, earlier on in the uh, and in, in this case, we have one big spike in the dis discrete, temporal, uh, by, um, discrete temporal derivative of the numerical solution. If we choose it from the second Turing region, we also get nice spots. But uh, the, the difference of this case from what I'm going to show you, that once a spot is formed somewhere, then it remains as a spot. It never changes topologically to something else. It doesn't become a valley, or it doesn't disappear. Uh, and then we have, this is a uh, hop type bifurcation, where a spatial pattern bifurcates in time. Later on it becomes com completely different, and then topologically completely different. See, we can find valleys in the places of mountains. This is not something to expect with the Turing type behavior. Turing type behavior is concerned with the static, invariant patterns in time. And we see that temporal uh, diffusion derivative stability is happening periodically in time as well. So this is through the discrete time derivative. This is more a limit cycle behavior. And we see the period doubling, uh, uh, no, the, the transitional diffusion driven instabilities happen more or less in a constant periods rather than the, uh, compared to the hop type bifurcation in which the period doubling behavior is more like, not exactly, but uh, it was a little bit like that at least according to my speculation. And we see the angular uh, spots become angular stripes, back to spots, back to stripes, and if you continue, it would happen, but it's quite computational, computationally costly, so that was probably maximum of my patience as well for now. <coughs> so conclusion is that we have found uh, 2D, uh, on 2D domains with normal boundary conditions, close form analytical solutions which were employed to, in the stability matrix from which we derive uh, the temporal bifurcation properties of reaction diffusion model, which is, which is a relatively new area and kind of uh, very mm, hot topic as well. Because uh, it, the mainstream uh, direction of research is mainly to look at how Turing po uh, spots or pattern. Now they are taking it a little bit further to see how these spatial patterns behave in time if we play with the parameters and find regions and so this was uh, future work, it can be extended to further dimensions, and then uh, reaction diffusion systems are used in, in cancer biology, in weather prediction, as we had a nice speech. And uh, we are able to completely understand and get a close form understanding of, of, of uh, an insight of reaction diffusion properties and, uh, and temporal bifurcation properties of these models. They can become very, very um, uh, useful in a lot of uh, applied mathematics research and scientific research. And this is the end of my talk. And I'm just about, probably a few questions. Um, Do you have any questions? Yeah. We thank Michael then. Thank you.